Let's talk Newcastle. Leaked messages have revealed that the Saudi crown prince controlled the Newcastle takeover. What is the significance of that? Wow, it's, uh, yeah, when I saw that headline a couple of days ago, it was uh, interesting to say the least, because going back to when uh, the Newcastle takeover happened, the main block to this was the piracy issue, where the Saudis were actually pirating the signal from Qatar for all the Premier League games. Uh, from B in Sport is the Qatar agency that owns the Premier League rights, but Saudi named their own uh, streaming service B Out rather than B In, which I always thought was a bit cheeky. Uh, and that was the problem: was that how could the Premier League sanction a new owner who had also been committing piracy on the Premier League signal and on their rights? Once that was resolved, then somehow the Premier League wanted. Uh, you know, clarity that it was not the Saudi state, it was PIF themselves that controlled Newcastle. Now, there's nothing in the rule book to say that a state cannot control uh, a Premier League club. So I don't know why they needed that clarity, um, because it seemed obvious to everybody that the Crown Prince would have a big say in the running of the club, because he is the uh, the ultimate uh, president of and uh, ruler of the of the PIF. So. It's an old story. Uh, this is now showing the Premier League once again to have had to go through a bit of a charade, I think, around this whole thing. They solved the piracy issue, which was the big thing that we could understand, but they've now you know, got themselves into a bit of a mess saying they, they want to have clarity about the ownership, and now it appears that the Crown Prince was heavily involved. I'm sure they would say now, though, that once the transaction was completed, he has not been involved on a day-to-day -day basis, and I doubt very much if he has. Uh, but look, it's it's given the Premier League another major problem at a time when they do not need it. And yeah, again, it's not been handled well. The, uh, the WhatsApps seem to have come, and we don't know because a lot of it's been redacted, but they seem to have come from the, uh, the seller of Newcastle side. Somebody working with Mike Ashley's team seems to be the, the source from the way it's all been written. Uh, I don't know the reason why somebody would want to leak those. Uh, but nevertheless, it's the Premier League that are the ones that uh, seem to have some some egg on their face again. Uh, it just keeps on coming nearly every day. There's another issue. So here we are again. I don't think this is going to create a major problem. There may be some sort of investigation, uh, but I think there'll be ways to get through this. I don't think it's going to affect anything in any big way other than another couple of days of bad headlines. So you don't expect Newcastle to face any sanctions or fines or points deductions or anything like that in, in the wake of this? No, I don't. Uh, I really don't. And you know, it really is, I think, you'd have to look at either expulsion from the league or nothing. And I think it's that clear. And I don't think we're going to go down the expulsion route. Uh, I think it's going to be smoothed over. And they'll prove that on a day-to-day -day basis, PIF is running the club, which it certainly appears to be. Now Amanda Staveley's gone and her husband have gone. Uh, and it's just the Rubin brothers and PIF left to run the club. It does seem that PIF are there, and there'll soon be an appointment of a new chief executive as well uh, for Newcastle, and that should make it fairly clear that uh, of how the club's going to be run.